Okay, so in this video, we will derive the formula for the arc length of a curve. The arc length is just the length of the curve between two points in a very intuitive way. So suppose we have the following problem. So we're given a function in the xy plane. Suppose the graph looks something like this. So this is a graph of our function y equals f of x. And suppose we are asking for the length of this curve between, say, two x values, between the point x equals a up to the point x equals b. So it's a very natural question. You look at the curve traced by the function y equals f of x, and you ask from the point x equals a to the point x equals b, what is the length of this curve? Well, let's think of a simple way to approximate the curve with a sequence, a set of very small line segments, right? The simplest curve to find the length of is a straight line segment. So imagine that we cover this curve with short line segments. Suppose I start one from here, say here. So here's a little line segment. Another line segment from here to here. Let me add one more from here to here. Let's keep going. And then what we have, if you add the length, of each line segment, and of course the length of a straight line is very easy to find. So if you add the length of each line segment and you add those lengths, you will have an approximation to the exact length of the curve, right? Clearly, if you add the length of all of these line segments together, you won't get the exact length of the curve. But you can imagine producing a similar picture with much shorter line segment really, really, really tiny line segment. Of course, you'll have way more, but the shorter your line segments, the closer you'll be to the exact curve. And in the limit, as the length of your line segments shrink to zero, you will achieve the exact length of the curve. So let's ask quite simply, how can we calculate the length of one line segment very intuitively? Well, We can look at a line segment forming a right triangle. And let's give these three quantities names. The hypotenuse, the base, and the height of our triangle. Again, we understand that to get the exact length of this curve, we cannot use line segments with a fixed length. Clearly from our picture, with fixed lengths, we will get an approximate length of the curve, but not the exact length. But as the lengths of our segments are shrinking to zero, in the limit, we will get the exact length of this curve. So you say, okay, well, this is now therefore a very small change along x. We need a letter that will, or not a letter, but a symbol that will represent a, an infinitesimal change in x. This is, of course, the x. The x is an infinitesimal change in x, which represents a change in x that is shrinking to zero. Well, here, this is not a change in y, but again, this will be a change in y shrinking to zero. So we need a symbol to represent an infinitesimal change in y. So this will therefore be dy, a change in y that is approaching zero. And of course, the hypotenuse, the length of this segment, we'll call ds. And we know that as this segment shrinks to zero, both dx and dy are shrinking to zero. So ds is an infinitesimal change in length. Therefore, dx and dy are infinitesimal changes in x and y, respectively. What we want, of course, is the length of this segment. But we can use Pythagoras' theorem here quite simply, right? So the hypotenuse of our right triangle squared, so ds squared, equals the base squared plus the height squared. Now the one thing is we would like 
be able to integrate along the x-axis, and so having everything in terms of x and dx. How can we calculate dy in terms of dx? Well, there's two ways you can think about this. Look at the function y equals f of x and find its derivative, dy over dx. This is the derivative of y with respect to x, which is, of course, f prime of x. So if you want to solve for dy, multiply by dx, and so dy is quite simply f prime of x dx. So there you go. Now you have dy as a function of x and dx, the derivative of the function at x times dx. You can think of it even in simpler terms, right? dy is the change in y in this line, which is kind of close to the tangent line, and if you want the change in y in a straight line, it is of course the slope of the line, the derivative, times the change in x. And now we're good to go. So let's replace our dy by f prime of x dx. So what comes out is of course dx squared plus, and if you square this, you'll have the derivative squared times dx squared. So it's the derivative of x squared times dx squared. Notice that both terms are multiplied by dx squared, so we can factor a dx squared on the right. And if you factor dx squared from both terms, you're left with 1 plus the derivative of the function squared. So f prime of x, the whole function squared. And now we can easily solve for our ds, the length of this curve will just be the square root on both sides. So the length of a, an infinitesimal line segment is the square root of this expression. Well, we have a product between these two terms, this times this. So we can do the root of the first term times the root of the second term. So root of the first term, 1 plus the derivative of our function, all squared, times, now as dx is positive, the root of dx squared, of course, returns simply dx. And now we're essentially done. You say, okay, if we take one little short line segment, so a, an infinitesimal line segment, whose length is shrinking to zero, the length as a function of x and dx is the square root of one plus the derivative of the function squared dx. To get, of course, the total length of this curve, we have to add up the lengths of all of these segments. So, the length of the curve, I'll write uppercase s, you could also use l, it doesn't matter, is obtained by summing, integrating, all of these short line segments, right, ds is the length of this line segment, and if we sum all of these short lengths, in the limit, as the line segments shrink to zero, we will get the exact length of the curve, but we must sum the length of these segments from x equals 8 to x equals b. And of course we can replace our ds by its expression as a function of x and dx. So the arc length of the curve is obtained by integrating from a to b the expression the square root of 1 plus the derivative of the function squared dx. So there you have it. So if you're given the function y equals f of x between x equals a and x equals b, and you ask how long is the curve that is being traced by this function, the answer is the integral of the square root of 1 plus your derivative squared, with respect to x of course, as x ranges from a, your left hand point, up to x equals b, your right hand point, and that's it.